what we're uh, here to discuss today is the start of the first of the clinical trials in the UK, which is uh, obviously a very exciting time for everybody. And uh, this is the beginning of testing um, one of two candidate vaccines uh, in human trials. When did work start, Doctor? Uh, so work on the vaccine started very early on uh, in the year. So um, in the, within the first couple of weeks of January, uh, scientists were able to um, sequence the virus that was discovered in China. And that means that we were able to understand it very quickly. And from that moment on, um, work to develop a candidate vaccine um, went forward at a great pace. What have been the challenges in seeking to combat this particular virus? Uh, from a vaccine point of view... Yes. Um, so it's a new virus, and uh, that uh, brings uh, uh, big challenges in terms of developing a vaccine. What we're able to do is use the latest um, gene technology in order to um, speed up the first stages of developing the candidate vaccine. And that is something that um, Professor Sarah Gilbert with her team at Oxford have um, uh, been doing. Uh, but then we still need to trial it in, in humans, and those trials take time, and that's what we're starting uh, to do now. So compared with, for example, developing a new flu uh, vaccine, it, it does have uh, different challenges because it's uh, a new virus, whereas for flu, for example, we would um, understand that uh, virus uh, and how to make a vaccine because of our, our years of experience of doing that. So it will take a little bit longer than, than say, for something like flu. How do you, uh, this may be an offensive term and I don't wish to be, how do you select what I would call the guinea pigs, the, the humans who will be trialled? <laughs> is, is, um, is it a term we no longer use? I sense it probably is, and I apologise. <laughs> oh, uh, we don't tend to use that term. Okay. We usually talk about our participants. <laughs> okay, and our, our let me rephrase that. Doctor, how do you select the participants in your trials? <laughs> Uh, that's a great question, and uh, that is where um, uh, myself and my colleagues, um, Saul Faust and at the other sites as well, are, are very much involved. So this is a multi-site trial, which means that if you want to volunteer, you can uh, you can go onto the website uh, and, and see w where you can volunteer. Um, the Southampton and Thames Valley, and also uh, Greater London Imperial, it's where we're involved. And, and then there's a, a number of criteria um, that people need to fulfil in order to be eligible to be in this early stage vaccine trial. And they're usually quite strict uh, so that we can understand how the vaccine is performing. I mean, presumably you need to be of fairly good health, to be, I mean, of a certain age and a certain level of health to be considered as a participant, as we call them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's very normal for these sure. early phase trials. So, uh, and uh, and what happens is, as we understand um, the vaccine and the responses, then we move to um, larger phase two or phase three trials, where we include more people. And ultimately, what we want is a vaccine that is going to protect people from this infection and particularly protect the vulnerable and the elderly. Are you able to say broadly you're looking for, I don't know, adults aged 20 to 40 or something like that? Or is it not quite as prescriptive as that? Uh, so we're looking for adults um, aged 18 to 55. Okay, right. And uh, the, the details are all on the website okay. and it's quite clearly set out. So Brilliant. if people want to... Um, what, what is that website before I forget, Doctor? <laughs> so if you, if you look up the um, Oxford Vaccine Group and look for okay. the COVID-19 Oxford Vaccine Trial, you'll find it. Now, on to other matters. Um, is it quite collegiate in your profession in that you share with other countries or is there a race for a particular university or research centre to be the first with the drug? And uh, that again is a good question. Um, so academic medicine is, is um, to some extent competitive and that competitive process is uh, advantageous because it means that uh, the best science is, is the one that uh, gets funded and moves forward. So the the, the landscape in which we're working is, is uh, to some extent competitive, but what's happened because of this global crisis is that people have come together in order to move forward as quickly as possible. And uh, I mean, the first stage of that was just um, publication of the sequence of the virus in January. So it, yes, it's been more collegiate. We've had um, laboratories collaborating uh, and you know, the, 
the global effort is really to deliver this vaccine as quickly as possible. But what we're seeing is a number of different candidates across the world. And again, that means that uh, ultimately we'll be able to select from the best candidates uh, to uh, protect people from infection. Is your sense, Doctor, that w w hopefully when it is successful, it will be similar to the what's known as the flu jab? That is to say, people need to take it each year, or how long will it last? That's a good question. That's something that um, we're uh, certainly looking at in terms of how uh, people are responding naturally when they get an infection. Uh, and um, But at this point, it's quite early really to understand that um it's possible that uh, the virus could circulate in the community and we would need to look at how to protect um, people f uh, from um, infection over the long term and that would be um a, a question for research going forward over the next years i mean the million dollar question or in your case the 22.5 <laughs> million pound <laughs> question is when might it be available to the public doctor uh, well, I'd like to say, uh, you know, uh, yeah, as soon as possible, <laughs> yesterday, yeah. yes, and, and certainly hearing um, some of the news you were saying earlier, I mean, really, that this is there is a great need for this vaccine and, you know, the effects on health um, from, uh, from the virus, both directly, people who become infected and also, you know, uh, the wider effects on health and the economy really are um, of great concern and that's why we're working so quickly. Um, we're looking at a, a time scale of, of months uh, while we trial this vaccine. And certainly, as we come towards the end of this first phase of the vaccine trials, we'll have, be able to say um, much more clearly where that's going to be. Uh, but we're certainly looking at really pushing things forward so that we start to have some answers about how these vaccines are behaving in the autumn. Will you be able... I mean, the, the demand, let alone in this country, globally, will be huge. Will we be able to distribute it as well, uh, quickly enough? Uh, so, scaling up manufacturing and then distribution are uh, going to be of um, key questions when we have those uh, vaccine candidates available. And people are already looking at that. So, in terms of developing this, uh, the, uh, the vaccine, the two candidates in the UK, uh, we also have to look at how they're going to be manufactured and distributed and also at what cost. And that is part of the wider scope of this work and people are already working on it. Um, it it, to some extent, it depends on, on which vaccine we use and how we use it. Uh, but it will be, uh, well, it already is, uh, you know, of such great importance that, that there'll be, there is a global effort to, to deliver it. Uh, so I think that um, I can be confident that um, we will be able to do that when the time comes. Um, just to tell listeners, we're going to delay the news for a couple of minutes, <coughs> excuse me, because it's such a privilege to speak to uh, one of the professors involved or one of the uh, research fellows involved in something that's effectively <laughs> almost close to finishing a world. War, so it's worth keeping the doctor on that. Just a couple <laughs> four questions. Thank you very much uh, indeed for your time, doctor. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Is it is twenty two point five million pounds enough? Because there's no money on earth that this va this vaccine would be worth. Will you need more? Do you think? It's certainly very helpful to get that support and that funding at this point in in our work. Um, it will go a long way to moving things forward. Uh, we're doing our best to deliver this efficiently. Uh, one of the things that all the universities, um, uh, or many of the universities have done across the UK is to now focus uh, their work onto COVID um, uh, research, which does mean that um, many people are now really um, able to uh, deliver research yeah. uh, at cost. Um, so uh, I think the 22.5 million will go a long way. Right. And um, we were talking just earlier about um, scale up, so manufacturing and distribution. Uh, that's going to require more funding, yes. um, but it will certainly be worth it when the time comes. And is it, as the movies would have it, a lot of incredibly bright people in long white coats sitting in laboratories <laughs> with test tubes and suddenly somebody, I don't know, John or Sarah says, yes, I think I've got it. Dr. Pollock, come down quick. We've got it. Well, how does it work? Uh, well, um, Not like that, my dad really. always says to me that research is 99% perspiration and one percent inspiration <laughs> <laughs> so it's just hard graft uh, that's certainly my experience okay. uh, one of the reasons that we do it is you do get those moments of inspiration and that's really wonderful it's very rewarding uh, but to to bring that to fruition to have something a tool that we can really use to protect society requires that 99 percent perspiration and do you and your colleagues feel the pressure it must be huge the stress you're working under 
the pressure, yes, the pressure is there. And uh, But um, we're trained for this. We're used to delivering these kind of vaccine trials. We're doing it uh, under more scrutiny yeah. and uh, more quickly than uh, we would... Um, perhaps work uh, for some other vaccines but yes but it's it's and, fine and lastly when you and when you and your colleagues are successful oh, how long will trials last by the way actually doctor sorry penultimate question uh, so, so these early trials will last um uh, up to one year what but we'll get uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but the early de- and that's for the follow up visits. But the the early part of of the of the trials will get data coming through all the time. Okay. So um so it's it's normal for us to follow up volunteers uh, who've been in the trial for quite a long time afterwards. But that doesn't mean that we won't get data coming through but, um, right from the beginning. Cause we, but we could have a product on the market in the in the autumn or w- early winter. I think that's ambitious. I think Indeed. that's ambitious. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we would like right? that. We would like that to have that uh, to be that early. Um, but um, we will we'll know more as we get data from okay. these first trials. And lastly, who will own it? As it's sold, who, who will own the product? Imperial College? Um, so this, um, uh, in, in terms of ownership and distribution, so, the, so there Can are... I buy it, is what I'm saying. Can, I buy... <laughs> <laughs> can you personally buy it? So in... <laughs> no, can I buy the project? No, because there's going to be, this is going to be a abs- potential world beater. Will, will the, the, the money it makes, does that go to you and Oxford University? Well, not you personally. Does it go to the Imperial College? Does it go to a, a holding company? Who will market it? Uh, so those are discussions that um, need to be taken forward at the manufacturing stage. Right. So initially, um, the, uh, the the vaccine project that we're working on now, this particular one, is sponsored by Ox- uh, the University of Oxford. Right, and I know they uh, have so a company through which they market uh, their their products as well, don't they? So it would go. So they that. may be yeah. looking looking yeah. at doing that, but it's right. it's at the early stages to say that. Yeah. 